Hey there, it's Heather with TwoBlooms.com and in this Lightroom tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to correct and enhance an underexposed image right here in Lightroom. Um, we're going to be working with this image. This is the final photo and this is the before. This is the starting point. So I'm going to be showing you four ways to correct underexposure and uh, kind of how to figure out which way uh, you should be using for your photo. So let's get started right away. Uh, the first technique we're going to look at is we're going to just look at our histogram. First of all, you'll notice that there's lots of blacks and shadows in this image. You can just tell right off the bat that it's very dark. There's not a ton of highlights. Um, most of the highlights are coming from the reflection of the backlight in the water. Um, but it's mostly lower range midtones and shadows. So what you can do with this histogram is actually click on it and drag the part that you want and shift that. So I'm gonna just click on the shadows and kind of shift that to the right and you can see slowly how it's taking on a different look. Now this isn't a very exact science because you're kind of just shifting things all over, but um, if you don't want to mess with your highlights very much or if you want to kind of just move your midtones around, um, this is a really great way to do that. So you're not just moving your highlights and you're not just moving your shadows. You're, you're kind of evening, evening everything out. So um, this is a fun thing to play with. You can play with your histogram right from here. But uh, for this image, we are going to just reset this and... Uh, come down here to the basic panel. Now the most obvious way to adjust your exposure and to increase it is by the exposure slider. Same thing here, you're going to notice the histogram changing and this is also not an exact science. It's going to bump up everything in your histogram. You can see how it's already bumped up the highlights and the midtones and the shadows. So just showing you here um, how it just bumps up everything. So if you're wanting to keep the highlights down and you only want to bring some of the midtones, this exposure slider might not work for you. So moving on to the next way, we're gonna come down to our tone curve. Now what I love about the tone curve is that you can be very detailed, very refined, and very specific with where you want um, to change your exposure. So for this image, I would just say I'd want to um, lift the midtones a bit just to make them a little lighter. But I don't want to get rid of my blacks and my highlights because I really I don't want my highlights being too prominent. But um, so what I basically did is just left clicked and I added a point and I started to drag it up. I'm going to create another click down here and just kind of drag it down so I have more blacks. And you can see this is a very, um, it's very touchy. So I'm not, I'm barely moving this and you can see how dark it's getting. So this is something to really play with image by image. It's not gonna be a one size fits all. So um, you can kind of just play with that. You can play with the, the point down here and you can add as many as you'd like. So you can just see how that's really taken the shape of a new image just by a few tone curve adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these. I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this, but for now, this is what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do for this image, I still have one more thing to show you. But for all of my images, about 99% of my work, I always use presets. So I'm going to come down to my recollections collection. And this collection, you pretty much need uh, perfect exposed images. So this is a really great opportunity to show you how I edit and um, how I also adjust a preset. Um, because I tend to shoot a little underexposed. 
So my presets don't always work 100% off the bat when I'm using them, so I shouldn't expect them to do that for you. So I'm gonna come down here. There's only a couple in this collection that will boost your exposure, like Heaven on Earth and, um, where's the other one? Quiet Moments, that one does it. But I'm going to choose Left to Wonder. I love this one because um, it still keeps those pretty greens and this is great for like lifestyle, everyday work, um, documentary. So I love the way that my greens look, how fresh and crisp it looks, but I'm going to just bump my exposure at just a tiny bit here. And um, I like the way that the water is popping at this moment, but I do want to add some more shadows and blacks, so I'm going to come down to my basic panel over here and adjust these sliders. So let's see, shadows are looking pretty good. I am going to increase my whites. I love my images to pop with color and whites and blacks. I just, I love that richness. So I'm gonna bring my whites to about plus 43 and my blacks down. I don't wanna get rid of um, that many blacks. So I'm loving the way that this is looking at the moment. So this looks pretty good. If I were to decrease my blacks and it's starting to look kind of crazy, so I'm going to just leave it right there, about plus seven. Okay, and then if you've ever watched any of my other tutorials or if you tune in for later stuff, you will notice that I love colorful, vibrant images. So I'm going to adjust my vibrance over here to about a plus, 20, 24, that looks good. Um, it basically just takes the midtones and increases the color in the midtones. So we have a lot of midtones in this image. So it really helped this image pop without touching saturation um, and making things look too over the top. So um, his skin's looking a little blue, so I am going to bump up the white balance a little bit. Let's see. And this also makes the grass look a little bit more uh, natural. Let's see, that's looking pretty good. So now his skin doesn't look so blue and uh, deathly. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is um, actually two things. So what you could do to also play with exposure is use a radial filter. Now I'm already on my dodge filter, so this is going to um, add a little bit of light so I could, you know, create this filter, I'm trying to drag it, and then adjust it from here. So basically it creates this little ring of light and it's only going to apply that, as you can see, inside this ring. Now I'm just showing you um, for demonstration purposes what it's doing. So it feathers the light so it's not so dramatic. So we could just come in here, and if we just want the extra exposure to be on him, we can adjust our filter that way. So now his skin looks a little bit more bright. You can, um, it's not so dark and shaded. So that's another way to play with your exposure. I'm actually going to delete that so I can show you the next thing, and then we will be all done wrapping up. Um, another way is you can use your adjustment brush. This is a very localized way to increase your exposure and to kind of play around with it. I have my Dodge brush chosen, so I'm just gonna brush all over his little body, maybe his hands, and then you can play with it from here. Um, then you can also add a new brush if you just want to um, brush over the skin again just to make it pop um, without touching the rest of the the previous brush strokes so there you have it we went from this image on the left to this one on the right by just a few adjustments in the basic panel um, exposure and a preset application so I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you can use this in your own photography editing. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, also make sure you hit a big thumbs up if you like this and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.